this year we're branching out to what inspired the hip-hop movement from the civil rights movement, so I'm really looking forward to that. Hip-hop, an art form that has now surpassed rock as the most popular genre in America. <laughs> it was our intention to shed light on hip-hop and hip-hop's artistic genius, as well as its radical capacity to inspire social change. Tonight, we're gonna to be joined by a panel that will explore the true power of hip-hop. Welcome, Welcome to, to the Hip-Hop hip -hop Fellow. We are really lucky to be working with the Kennedy Center and with the March on Washington Film Festival to have Ninth Wonder here for the Harvard film. Um, something that he's wanted to do at the museum for quite some time. He does have a little display upstairs in the music exhibit, so the opportunity to bring his story here in a more comprehensive way was just a really exciting opportunity. And to build the most unconventional bridge to our past. I am here at the National Museum of African American History and Culture, the Smithsonian, which is also crazy to say, um, but uh, enlightening and delightful to say. I'm here because I am here for the film festival. Uh, the Marshall and Washington Film Festival is showing my documentary, The Hip Hop Fellow, directed by Kenneth Price. And it's about my year at Harvard University as a fellow and as a teacher. I believe the film is speaking to the idea of hip hop being genius. We're gonna show the movie first um, to let people kind of absorb exactly what this is because I don't think people really know what to expect of this. As evident from the screening, the Hip Hop Fellow serves as the perfect catalyst for conversation around the intersection of hip hop, social justice, and academia. And after which we're gonna have a panel discussion and you know usually panelists are at the table. There's gonna be some at a table, but my station is gonna be behind the turntables. Right? So I'm able to play songs as we talk about them. And that's kind of the way I, um, I teach my classroom. You know, usually turntables. So when I want to talk about a record, I don't want to just play it off my computer. I really give you, you're hearing the hip, you're hearing hip hop, but I also want to give you the action as well so you can see, you know, how it's done. I want the mood to be like we're all sitting at home having a conversation. I'm not big into very stringent, very strict, methods of learning or education. I think we're past that point. I just wanted to talk to you briefly about the museum, right? It was important for us to position music and particularly um, hip hop throughout the building in ways that um, kind of sonically illustrate what we're talking about. To have a film that is not just focused on an incredibly important figure in hip hop, but that touches on all of these much larger issues. Um, um, we're not just looking at a generic kind of overview of social justice or activism. You know, he's talking about specific moments, specific things, and specific groups within hip hop that have had a lasting impact on, on him and has also had a lasting impact on society overall. And so to find a way to connect those conversations um, is exactly what we're trying to do here in the museum and demonstrate that, you know, it is a it is a relationship, it is a continuing conversation when you look at music and politics, for example, um, or music and any kind of social justice movement, it's always present and hip hop is absolutely no different. Coming in here forces you to have the conversation. I think in your mind, no matter what color you are, creed you are, you're already having a conversation in your head by stepping in this building because you're gonna see things that's gonna make you have the conversation. The curiosity is already up. So I think you're already having that right now. Um, if you come in this building, and since you come in here and you come to the festival, that's like twofold. So much skepticism about law in hip hop. Uh, in hip hop, law is mainly viewed as a means of oppression, as a tool to subordinate uh, black folks. In my work, what I've tried to do is is a little bit of the translation that, that Ninth described, uh, taking the perspectives of hip hop and, and explaining them, demonstrating the genius to, to policymakers. We have to understand how each generation speaks to each other, what the bridge is, like who, who are causing these particular bridges to go from this to this to this. Because I know that's what it started for me. I, I have 35,000 pieces of vinyl mm. from the 70s because I listened to hip hop first. Hip hop what made me go back 
not only just to go back and listen to vinyl, but just to go back and read on every great black person we've ever had. It was a rap record that made me do that. I, I guess I can say I kind of grew up as hip hop grew up. I was born in 78, hip hop started in the 70s. And as a young kid, I was um, uh, made aware of the music and fell in love immediately and have been following it ever since. And at a certain point, um, as a young adult, I realized that not only could I be a fan, but I could help participate and help push it forward. And so it just became my passion. You know, there's a few ways in every generation to deal with whatever's going on. I'm not sure everyone's had a chance yet to really create the art that they want to create in reaction to what's going on now. Hip hop is another form of the message. The message has been passed down from generation to generation in many different forms, whether it's been in jazz, whether it's been in ragtime, whether it's been in blues, whether it's been in country music or rock music. It's all about the message and the ability to tell a story. I think when it got to civil rights, it turned the corner of how much we add on to the message. Not only do we have a message, but now the backdrop needs to sound a certain way. This thing, we need to tell our own story. This haven't just started with hip hop. Like my class start year 1400. That's how my class starts. And it takes it all the way up into the late 90s. I want people to understand that this is very genius, that you have to be on your toes. If you're gonna be in a room of hip hop scholars, you have to know exactly what you're talking about. Music is like food. You have to give a chance for their palate to mature. I want them to learn um, that no matter what, how old you are, what color you are, where you come from, that hip hop doesn't exclude you. You don't have to be from a certain neighborhood. You don't have to live in a poverty stricken neighborhood or be dangerous or have a gun or all of the things that's been connected to our culture whether it been from a media stand a standpoint or a fan base or just total misconception. And so I want people to understand that no matter where you're from, that you're not excluded, that you can all understand what this is. And even if you don't understand it, you understand why we're passionate about it. I've, I've been able to travel across the world, you know, me and my brothers and sisters and DJing and MCing and whatever. And hip hop is very much alive around this globe than ever, right? And I think just the practice of it, no matter the industry can crumble and fall, there's always gonna be a kid on the corner rhyming. Music is a unifier and it helps to create, foster really great conversations. And so I think that everyone was able to find their way in um, and gain new entry points to music that either was a part of their history and their life soundtrack or a part of, you know, the next generation. Thank you. And I hope that you continue to support each and every person that is on this stage, each institution, so the museum, the March on Washington Film Festival, um, and make sure that you advocate for our culture in every space. It's the March on Washington, right? It's something that we learned about coming up as a key, you know, probably, arguably, the most famous speech we've ever had on this national mall is the I Have a Dream speech, right? And to be a part of that means a lot to me. And to have it in this building means a lot. To have it in the Oprah Winfrey Theater <laughs> means a lot. It just lets me know that hip hop has a place, but it needs to be curated the right way. And we need to be able to tell the story the right way. So that, it just lets me know that it's just an extension of history as we continue to go.